Hello and welcome to the July edition of Bunkum Monthly. We're coming to you today from the Swannanoa Library to let you know about some great upcoming county events. For more information about anything I mention in today's episode, you can visit our website at buncombecounty.org. While you're there, check out County Center, our news and information hub with great information about upcoming events and county programs. To view this episode again or see any of BCTV's great original programming, you can visit our YouTube page at buncombecounty.org slash YouTube. Well, every summer, the Swannanoa Library puts on a great concert series in Grovemont Square behind me called Groovin' on Grovemont. If you're a fan of local music, you should definitely check it out. Also, you don't even have to be a resident of Swannanoa to enjoy this family-friendly jam session. There will be three musical nights to experience. On Tuesday, July 11th at 6 p.m., Lyric will perform. With an enlightened mixture of pop, soul, and funk, Lyric will wake the undiscovered spirit within the audience. On Tuesday, July 25th at 6 p.m., Black Mountain local band Bayou Diesel performs a mix of dance, Cajun, and Zydeco. Shake percussive fun with Sonia Brooks at 5 p.m. that evening. Finally, on Tuesday, August 8th at 6 p.m., the Paper Crowns will perform. They are a multi-instrument genre-crossing power duo that is a gumbo of Appalachian folk, bluegrass, Dixie melodies, Delta blue, acid rock, southern gospel, and more. Each performance is free, and the Friends of the Swannanoa Library will have a half-price book sale starting at 5 p.m. each evening. Proceeds from the sale of pizza, hot dogs, and other goodies will go to help the Swannanoa Library and the Swannanoa Community Council. Donations are also appreciated. For more information about Groovin' on Grovemont, you can visit buncombecounty.org library. Buncombe County Health and Human Services wants your input for the Aging Plan. The Aging Plan is a five-year strategic plan that gives focus and direction to support our aging population. They're looking for your input by taking an online survey, which could take approximately three to five minutes for you to complete. Your participation in this anonymous survey will be completely voluntary, and you can skip any questions you do not wish to answer. The results will be available in the fall. They're looking for your input on the following topics health and social support services, housing and transportation, inclusion and participation in social events, employment and volunteering, information and communication, and safe and accessible outdoor areas. To take the survey, please visit buncombecounty.org slash HHS today. Well, what better place to tell you about upcoming library events than the Swannanoa Branch Library? Did you know that the Buncombe County Public Library System sponsors many great programs throughout the month for every age and interest? Here are a few coming up for July. On Tuesday, July 18th at 6.30 p.m., the Inca Candler Library is hosting a Growing and Cooking with Herbs class by Master Gardener Phil Rodebush. Want to capture seasonal herbs to make your dinners taste even better? Then you don't want to miss this class. On Tuesday, July 18th at 7 p.m., join the Black Mountain Library for their monthly mystery book club. For July, the featured book is Midwife's Tale by Sam Thomas. The Black Mountain Library isn't the only one that hosts a monthly book club. Check out buncombecounty.org library to see if any might interest you. On Tuesday, July 25th at 7 p.m., the Black Mountain Library is hosting The History of Music and Guitar with Paul Hutchinson. Hutchison is a local professional musician and music instructor who will present an educational lecture with live musical interludes. The program is designed for adults, teens, and tweens. Finally, on Friday, July 28th at 2 p.m., Pack Library is hosting another of their Get to Know series, introducing you to local businesses. This week is Scott's Knots Soft Pretzels. From Philadelphia to Asheville, come hear the tale and have a taste of what this popular pretzel vendor has to offer. Free samples will be given out. Now those are just a handful of the events from the Buncombe County Public Library System. To see the full list from each branch library, check out their calendar online at buncombecounty.org library. Kids of all ages are welcome to take part in the 2017 Summer Reading Program at their local library. The theme is Build a Better World. So if you love activities that include crafts, science experiments, books, and more, Check out some of the upcoming library events for the Summer Reading Program in July. On Wednesday, July 19th at 2 p.m., invent a better world with the Hands-On Science Museum at the North Asheville Library. The Hands-On Museum in Hendersonville will visit to offer engaging interactive exhibits that teach in a fun, hands-on way. 
On Saturday, July 22nd at the Oakley South Asheville Library, discover your inner sleuth with a solvent spy camp. Break the codes, conquer the laser maze, and stop the evil Dr. Sinister before he can take over the world. On Tuesday, July 25th at 2 p.m., join the Fairview Library for Snakes Alive with Ron Cromer. You'll have an exciting hands-on opportunity to experience a variety of gentle reptiles with Cromer's expertise, humor, and educational presentation. Finally, on Thursday, July 27th at 11 a.m., join the Lester Library for a presentation on incredible insects. Be prepared to catch specimens, make observations, and learn a lot of interesting entomology facts. Now those are just a few of the events sponsored by the library during the summer reading program. I wish I could have talked about more because they have a lot of fantastic events throughout July. If you're a parent looking for something fun for their child to do over the summer, definitely visit buncombecounty.org library to check out some of these events. Also, the more your child participates, the more free books they'll get at the end of the summer. If you're looking to add a new four-legged member to your family, look no further than the Asheville Humane Society. They have plenty of adoptable dogs, cats, and more currently in need of a good home. Also, when you adopt from the Asheville Humane Society, not only are you saving a life, but all of the pets have been spayed, neutered, received their shots, and some basic training. Here are some pets that are currently available for adoption. This four-year-old white and butterscotch cat is named Charlie. He's a domestic medium hair mix. He's been at the shelter for a while and is pretty frisky. But if you're looking for an active cat who can chase a laser pointer for hours, this is your guy. This is Allie. She's a four-year-old Kerr Blackmouth mix. According to her foster family, she loves a box of toys to sift through and pick out ones at different times. She has a bit of a need to chew, but mostly sticks to her toys. She also greets strangers with a lot of love and enthusiasm. This black domestic medium hair mix is named JD. He's a talkative 10-year-old guy who isn't the least bit shy. Senior cats are less rambunctious than kittens and may be a better choice for small children and seniors. This 11-year-old retriever terrier pity mix is Dixie. She's a laid-back senior sweetie who is looking for a nice patch of sunny carpet to take a nap on. Jasper is a 14-year-old male domestic short hair mix, and that's his spot. He loves to get pet and will go up to strangers to demand it, but mostly he just likes to stay in his spot and chill out. This brindle 10-year-old female hound mix is Pollyanna. You may think, oh, look at that cute 10-year-old dog relaxing. But if you take her home, your reaction may change to, how did that 10-year-old dog just clear a six-foot fence? She's not resting, she's bottling up all that puppy energy. This orange one-year-old female domestic short hair is Moana. She wishes she could be your perfect daughter. She can lead with pride, she's strong, and she loves to play along. See what I did there? Don't sue me, Disney. This eight-year-old terrier pity mix is Kent. He doesn't let his age stop him from playing outside with his favorite AHS caretaker. He loves attention and affection, and he plays very well with other dogs. Also, he's a fast learner. This sleepy gal is Denisha. She's a three-year-old black domestic short hair mix. She's probably upset that I woke her up to film a close-up of her face, but don't hold it against her. She'll make a wonderful addition to your home. This cute little guy is Drake. He's an extremely friendly black and white one-year-old retriever lab mix. Adopters be warned. It will be hard to leave your house with these brown eyes staring up at you when you go. Those are just a handful of the pets available at the Asheville Humane Society. To see them all, visit AshevilleHumane.org. Better yet, stop by and visit them in person. You'll get a better understanding of their personality that way. The Adoption Center is located at 14 Forever Friend Lane in Asheville. Hours throughout the summer are Tuesday through Saturday from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. For more information, you can call 828-761 2001. Buncombe County IT and GIS have combined forces to create Discover Buncombe, which is a great interactive data and map feature on Buncombe County's website to connect you to local resources. You can now explore Buncombe County in a brand new way with Discover Buncombe. Simply visit discover.buncombecounty.org and you'll be introduced to a new geographic information system designed for easy, simple use. To get started, merely search for an address. The location will show up within the interactive map with pictures of the address. From there, you can look up the property information, nearby parks, pools, and libraries, the school district, and even crime incident mapping. 
This new geographic information system tool is also available on your mobile device and tablet and will feature more search options in the future. Visit discover.buncombecounty.org today to search, click, discover. The U.S. Department of Agriculture has partnered with Buncombe County Schools and Buncombe County government to bring all children under 18 free meals throughout the summer. It's called the Summer Meal Program and there are no questions asked. The Summer Food Service Program ensures that low-income children continue to receive nutritious meals when school is not in session. There are multiple locations, including Lee Walker Heights, Hillcrest Apartments, Pisca View Apartments, the Irwin Swimming Pool, the Hominy Valley Swimming Pool, the North Buncombe Pool, Ledgewood Apartments, and many more. To find a list of all of the locations, you can visit fns.usda.gov slash sfsp. You will find an interactive map on the site where you can put in your address and discover the location closest to you. You can also call 1-866-3-HUNGRY. Summer meals will be serviced Monday through Friday, and there are no income requirements or registration. No questions asked. If you are under 18, you will get a free meal. For more information, all of this can be found at our Recreation Services website at buncombecounty.org parks. Well, now that it's the middle of summer, if you're looking for a fun family activity and a nice way to cool off, why not visit one of Buncombe County's five outdoor pools? The summer pool season runs until September 4th, though some pools will close in August. The five pool locations are the Cane Creek Pool, Irwin Pool, Hominy Valley Pool, Owen Pool, and North Buncombe Pool. Hours of operation are Saturday from 11 a.m. to 6.45 p.m., Sundays from 1 p.m. to 6.45 p.m., and Monday through Friday from noon to 5.45 p.m. Cost for entry is $3 per person per day, or you can buy a 10-visit pass for $25 or a 25-visit pass for $50. Pools are also available to rent for birthday parties, family reunions, or whatever you like. Please visit swimclubashville.com for more information about these private rentals. For more information about the pools, hours, or directions, please visit buncombecounty.org pools or call 828-250-4260. Also visit Discover Buncombe for an easy way to get directions to the closest pool for you. Just visit buncombecounty.org slash discover. The Council on Aging of Buncombe County is partnering with local organizations to bring you Medicare Choices Made Easy classes. It's for those of you who are new to Medicare or just need a refresher. There are plenty of them coming up in July. These informational sessions are free and open to the public. People new to Medicare, caregivers, and others who help senior citizens with their Medicare insurance should consider attending. The information presented is unbiased and accurate. No products will be sold, recommended, or endorsed. To register for the class, you can visit the Council on Aging of Buncombe County's website at coabc.org. Or you can call them for their upcoming schedule at 828-277-8288. This program is a collaboration with the Council on Aging of Buncombe County and the Senior Health Insurance Information Program, or SHIP. Even though the Asheville Art Museum is undergoing a renovation right now, that's not stopping them from releasing new exhibits. You should stop by their satellite location and check out their newest one called Homeland. It's taking place daily from July 22nd through September 17th at their temporary location, 175 Biltmore Avenue, which opens at 10 a.m. Inspired by the museum's recent acquisition of Homeland, a cutting-edge contemporary basket by Eastern Band Cherokee artist Shan Goshorn, the exhibit explores the connections that Southeastern Native artists have to their ancestral homelands. The works on view are drawn primarily from the collection of Lambert Wilson, a passionate collector of Southeastern Native art for over 30 years. For more information about the exhibit or all of the great exhibits from the Asheville Art Museum, you can visit ashevilleart.org. Did you know that the majority of abused prescription drugs come from friends and family? You could be a drug dealer and not even know it. One of the ways to help combat this statistic is to get rid of your prescription drugs safely and properly. There are safe ways to get rid of drugs that don't involve throwing them out or flushing them down the toilet, which has potential to hurt our water supply. And that's to drop them off at one of the prescription drug boxes in Buncombe County. There are three. The lobby of the Buncombe County Sheriff's Satellite Office at 339 New Leicester Highway, the lobby of the Buncombe County Courthouse at 60 Court Plaza in downtown Asheville, 
and the lobby of the Asheville Police Department at 100 Court Plaza in downtown Asheville. Overdose deaths involving prescription drugs have increased to almost 17,000 deaths a year in the United States. For more information about prescription drug drop-offs or how to prepare your medicine for drop-off, visit buncombecounty.org slash sheriff. Have you been wondering what to do with your expired drugs and medication? Have no fear. We're here to show you some do's and don'ts. Let's cover the do nots first. Do not throw expired drugs and medicine in the garbage without taking several steps to make sure they won't be tampered with. We'll get to those steps in a minute. It's important to not flush medicines down the sink or toilet unless the prescription labeling specifically instructs you to do so. Flushing drugs that are not meant to be flushed can contaminate rivers, lakes, and water supplies. Do not share prescriptions with friends. Doctors prescribe medicines based on specific symptoms and medical history. Something that helps you could be dangerous for someone else. Okay, let's look at some of the steps you can take to properly dispose of old medications. Check the drug labeling for specific disposal instructions. Some medicines have steps for disposal printed right on the packaging. Drop off expired medications at the Judicial Complex at 60 Court Plaza in downtown Asheville. Permanent drop boxes can be found on the first floor. Items can be dropped off Monday through Friday during regular business hours. If you are unable to find specific disposal instructions or are unable to drop off expired drugs at the Judicial Complex, take the medication out of its container and mix it with used coffee grounds or kitty litter. This makes it less appealing to children and pets. Seal the mixture in a bag or other container to prevent it from leaking from a garbage bag. Scratch out all personal information on a prescription label to protect your identity and your health information. Ask your pharmacist if you have any questions about proper medication disposal. If you have any questions about the county's prescription drop-off, call the Buncombe County Sheriff's Office at 828-250-6670. Now it's time to keep an eye out for the mountains most wanted for July 2017. Just so you know, information leading to the arrest of any of these individuals can net you a cash reward. Kendra K. Jones is wanted for two counts of financial card fraud, non-support, resisting public officers, unauthorized use of a motor vehicle, misdemeanor child abuse, misdemeanor larceny, simple possession of a Schedule II controlled substance, and six pretrial release violations. Jones is a white female who is 5'1 and weighs 145 pounds. She has brown hair and green eyes. Her last known address, 15 Moody Road, Asheville. Larry Eugene Shelton Jr. is wanted for failure to report change of address as a sex offender, Shelton is a white male who is 5 foot 11 and weighs 193 pounds. He has brown hair and blue eyes. His last known address, 30 Bradley Branch Road, Arden. Nathan Lee Luttrell is wanted for assault on a female, pretrial release violation, larceny of firearm, felony breaking and entering and communicating threats. Luttrell is a white male who is 5 foot 11 and weighs 165 pounds. He has black hair and blue eyes. His last known address, 354 Hooker's Gap Road, Leicester. If you know the location of any of the mounts most wanted, you could receive a cash reward. All you have to do is email tips at buncombecounty.org or you can call Crime Stoppers at 828-255-5050. With your help, we can continue to make Buncombe County a safer place to live, work, and play. The Buncombe County Office of Cooperative Extension is a great resource for all of your gardening questions. Not only do they have a Master Gardener hotline, but they host many gardening classes and seminars throughout the year, including their Ask a Gardener program. The next Ask a Gardener class is taking place on Wednesday, June 28th from 2.30 to 6 p.m. at Lake Louise Park in Weaverville. Speak to one of the Master Gardeners. 
ask questions, bring sample of plants for identification, learn about upcoming volunteer programs, purchase a gardening guide for the mountains, get access to other great publications from Cooperative Extension, and you can even pick up a soil test kit. For more information about the Buncombe County Office of Cooperative Extension's Master Gardener program, give them a call. This number is also their Master Gardener hotline, 828-255-5522. Coming up in August, Asheville Greenworks is hosting their 19th year of inspiring lectures by renowned plantsmen for their 2017 series of Speaking of Gardening, it's taking place on Friday and Saturday, August 11th and 12th at the Southern Highland Folk Arts Center, located at Milepost 382 on the Blue Ridge Parkway. This two-day symposium includes book signings, plant auctions, sponsor displays, and lunch. Network with professionals and enthusiasts, earn CEUs, and purchase plants and products from sponsors. Register soon as tickets tend to go quickly. Just visit AshevilleGreenworks.org. The North Carolina Arboretum has a great new exhibit called Winged Wonders, Step into the World of Butterflies. It's taking place through October at the Arboretum, located at 100 Frederick Law Olmsted Way in Asheville. Daily hours are 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. See the miracle of metamorphosis before your very eyes. On display inside the Baker Exhibit Center greenhouse, Wing Wonders is an indoor butterfly exhibit featuring a chrysalis rearing chamber and walk through butterfly house where visitors can meet a whole host of local butterfly species. Species including monarchs, swallowtails, and more. For more information about the exhibit, the Arboretum, or more great exhibits, you can visit ncarboretum.org. The Southern Highlands Crafts Fair Summer Edition is back at the U.S. Cellular Center this year. So if you're a connoisseur, collector, or just admirer of local crafts and history, you definitely want to check this out. It's taking place Friday through Sunday, July 21st through 23rd from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on Friday and Saturday and closing at 5 p.m. on Sunday. Approaching its 70th year, the craft fair of the Southern Highlands will showcase a variety of crafts from contemporary to traditional in clay, wood, metal, glass, fiber, and more. Nearly 200 makers from the Craft Guild will showcase their works at the event. Cost is $8 for adults, with children 12 and under for free. Local mountain musicians will also be on hand to perform live on the arena stage. For more information about the fair or a complete list of performers or artists on hand, you can visit southernhighlandguild.org. If you love running 5Ks, but you think to yourself, I could use a bit more of a challenge, then why not check out IDAF's Asheville Triathlon? It's taking place on Sunday, July 23rd at the Asheville Recreation Park. The race consists of a beautiful outdoor swim in a 50-meter pool, rolling bike course, and a flat and fast run course, which is perfect for every level of triathlete, from novice to elites. You can register for the run at IDAF.net. Well, Sundays in July bring back the Songcatcher Music Series, now in its 15th year. So if you love acoustic music with roots in Southern Appalachia, you should definitely check it out. It will take place every Sunday in July from 3 to 5 p.m. in the Pisca Forest at 11250 Pisca Highway. The Songcatcher's Music Series is an official part of the Blue Ridge National Heritage Area's Music Trail. Local musicians start the jam at 3 p.m. with featured local artists Mary Z. Cox and Tim Gardner, Crooked Pine Old Time Band, Laura Boozinger and Josh Goforth, Amy and Bob Buckingham, and the Pretty Little Goat String Band. Admission is $6 for adults, $3 for children aged 4 to 15. For more information about the event, you can visit cradleofforestry.com slash events. You can also call 828-877-877. 3130. Well, thank you for joining us and thank you for watching Bunkum Monthly for the events of July 2017. As I mentioned before, all of the information I mentioned in today's episode can be found online at our website at buncombecounty.org. To visit Buncombe County's website's informational hub, County Center, just click All News on the homepage of buncombecounty.org. To see this program again or any of BCTV's great original programming, visit buncombecounty.org slash YouTube. Finally, subscribe to our Facebook or Twitter feeds to get up-to-the-minute news and important information about county services and much more. Thank you for watching and have a great July, Buncombe County. We'll see you in August.